Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner, Classic slash Non-Classics. This is episode number 417 and double shot number 338. Okay? Two trades in the both of Marvel. First up, it's Spider-Man slash Spider-Gwen. Uh, sitting in a tree. Yeah, this is a crossover from early this year. This collects Spider-Man Volume 2 issues uh, 12 to 14 and Spider-Gwen... And I have to look this up because I don't like the fact Marvel relaunched this book uh, about two years ago. Let's see. These are issues. Uh, 21 to 23 of Spider-Gwen. Mm -hmm. Though for Marvel Legacy, I'm not happy with the fact that Marvel could not restore the original numbering for this thing. Yeah. So this is just a crossover between these two books and... This kind of happens at the start of it, but yeah. Now, Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis does, of course, Spider-Man, and Jason Latour does um, Spider-Gwen. Sarah Pacelli does Spider-Man. Uh, Robbie Rodriguez uh, does uh, Spider-Gwen. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, now, the story of this is that Miles' father is missing, so he has to basically use uh, Web Warrior tech, which I'm still thinking. Now, when, when I originally read this, and I read this recently, I'm like, how in the world did they get their hands on this thing? Because, and Miles, apparently, it's implied Miles has kind of forgotten about Spider-Verse. Where he does kind of know about it, so he does know about the Web Warrior tech. And, uh... One thing I love about this thing is references to Spider-Women crossover. So you can kind of say this is kind of a minor follow-up to that. So, hey, you got to at least praise it, praise for continuity. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting things about this crossover is that Miles meets the Earth-65 version of Matt Murdock. And how much of a dick he is. And I keep thinking, though, is Bendis going to have it where, where Spider- well, or the Miles Morales Spider-Man goes visit the Daredevil in uh in his uh in his office in the in the district attorney's office and say, hey, um, I went to this alternate Earth 65 and I met an alternate version of you and he was the kingpin of crime, and I keep thinking though, why hasn't Bendis done that yet? Yeah, I mean this 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 only came out just early this year, so I would think he would have done it by now, but I haven't seen it. Either that, he's kind of forgotten about it. But, uh, yeah, at one point, well, well, they made the Earth-65 version of Jefferson Davis. We call himself the Scorpion. Now, Miles basically thought it was actually his actual father, but it really wasn't. It was really not his father at all. It was just basically just, just an evil version of his father. So, yeah. And at one point, basically, they also have it where uh, Miles and Gwen basically hop the multiverse. Like, the first place they go... And I was so happy to see this. They go to the Spider-Man New War Earth. Hooray. First time since he's, he's been seen since Spider-Verse. They also meet up with uh, Spider-Ham, uh, Penny Parker. First time she's been seen since uh, Spider-Verse as well. Uh, let's see. One of the most hilarious ones. And I can't believe they actually referenced it. This was just so hilarious. Um... Yeah, they make a couple references to but two particular Earths. I was so happy with this. Look, first, Spider-Man New War! Yay! And and this is probably by far one of the most hilarious in-jokes I have ever seen. It's implied that, that Miles and Gwen go to DC Universe in this panel. I'm like, sweet Jesus. Yeah, and that's supposed to be the Daily Planet. Yeah, it's implied that the, and this streak is supposed to be Superman. I am not kidding about that. Yeah, and then they go to the Marvel Zombies universe. It's like, quick, 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 hit it, hit it. <laughs> it's so hilarious. And this is supposed to be like zombie verse. It looks like Typhoid Mary, Dr. Octopus, the King Ping, Green Goblin, and what looks like Enchantress. It's so hilarious. And of course, you see sort of applied wedding between Miles and Gwen. Uh, yeah, and of course, eventually that my Oh, yeah. Um, there's a few other alternate different versions of, well, well, they meet up with Spider-Ham making his, well, first real appearance in the series. Also, uh, the Agents of Silk, um, which are basically recurring villains in the Spider-Gwen series. Uh, 
And get this, the leader of the group is uh, Sydney Moon. Oh yeah, and get this, um, Jessica Drew in Earth 65 is a guy. No, seriously, that's who it is. It's a guy. Um, but yeah, it is so interesting. Let's see if I can find a good pictures here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here's basically Jason Latour's sketches. So basically we have uh, Max Morales Stacy, Spider-Boy. He must be the son of uh, an ultra version of Gwen and Miles. We also have Charlotte Miles Stacy, probably the daughter. We have a version of Craven the Hunter who became Spider-Man. And um, there's also Penny Parker as well, who is the... Uh, daughter of an alternate version of Spider-Man. Let's see if I can find a good picture of her. Yeah, because she does show up in here for like one panel. Let's see if I can find her here. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, this is Penny Parker right here in this robot suit. Yeah, so basically... Um, I'm not sure who this one with the goggles is supposed to be. Let's see if they say his person's name. Uh, let's see. Oh, is even a Judge Dredd version. Alberto Rowe is the law. It's so hilarious. But, yeah. It's, it's great the fact that Bendis and Latour basically decided to team up to do this quick little uh, three-month crossover. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Despite the fact it doesn't leave much ramifications down the line, but yeah. I think that Latour and Bendis did this because they felt like it. Yeah, that's my personal guess of why they did it, but this is just pure fun. I really enjoy this. Um, it's not a bad crossover. It's actually really good. I'm going to get this 9 out of 10. This is just really, really good. Next up is Deadpool the Duck. Yep, this contains the entire five-issue miniseries by Stuart Moore. And this is actually kind of the first uh, Howard the Duck book since this book has been canceled. Um, I think this came out, I think, like late last year. This is kind of sort of like a replacement for Howard the Duck, basically. It's what he was up to after Marvel canceled his book. Uh, I think it was last year. Yeah, last year they canceled his book. Um, yeah, this does happen, uh, plus Rocket shows up in here. Now, some of you are probably wondering, and they, th they did not throw an editorial note in here, like, when, when did Howard the Duck and Rocket meet? Uh, they actually met at the start of the pre, the last stone volume that came out for Howard the Duck. Yeah, when he was sent to space. Yeah. And we also get a chance to see in here, and I was... I was laughing when I saw this guy again. I'm like, seriously, they brought this guy back? They brought back Dr. Bong. Seriously, that's the guy's name, Dr. Bong. I'm like, wow. It's like they really went to the tool shed of basically semi-obscure villains. I only know about him because I'm a longtime Marvel fan. Yeah, and I've read the entire Howard the Duck series, so I know who Dr. Bong is. Yeah. Let's see if I can find him here. I think he shows up the energy four, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Here he is. It's Dr. Bong. Yep, that's seriously his name. He's an old... Here's a much better picture of him. Uh, who's the artist for this miniseries? The artist is... Uh, Japako Jacobo Kamakai. I think I see you pronounce the person's name. Yeah, this is Dr. Bong, an, a very old enemy of Howard the Duck. He made his first appearance in issue 30 of the first fly of Howard the Duck. Yeah, old villain. And yeah, it's like, okay, let's just have him marry like every other woman. Like, first he poses this older woman, then he poses to her daughter. It's just so hilarious but yeah i don't have a problem with dr bong but he's so he just he is such a hilariously awful villain he's not not like not an awful villain, basically a, a very bad villain <laughs> I, i'm like okay it's howard the duck so you gotta throw in dr bong because he wasn't featured in the most recent howard the duck book so why not throw him in here as well yeah this is just a team up between howard the duck 
Deadpool who merge into Deadpool the Duck. My guess is they probably get the idea from this from the um, uh, Deadpool Kills Deadpool, which there was a Deadpool Duck. Uh, so they decided, that, why not do a 616 version of this and where it's an accidental merger of Howard the Duck and Deadpool. Yeah. And they introduce this one-shot character who, as far as I know, in their appearance, her name is Agent Mary. They never say her last name. But this oh wait woman is actually her mother. No, seriously. It's completely true. And Rocket basically has got space rabies. And he was able to be cured, but no problem. So, yeah, and it's also a version of, of Dumb... There's actually an LMD version of Dumb Doom who just sits around in the front office. It is so hilarious. And the book kind of ends with how we're like, taking a job at, as a front desk receptionist. Yeah. So, this is just pure fun. Yeah. So... You gotta love the fact that um, Deadpool miniseries always gonna be purely just fun, and this by fact, yes, it's a team between Howard the Duck and Deadpool. Though I get maybe of how I know when Howard the Duck met Rocket, but I have to ask this question: When did Howard meet Deadpool? Yeah, I have no idea when he met Deadpool. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get this nine out of ten. This is just really good. Yeah, just so hilarious. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode. Excuse me. Which is um, uh, episode 418, double shot uh, 339. Okay? But until then, I will see you there. Bye.